Hello people, uh, in this video, I would uh, like to talk about one of my favorite uh, aspects of reading, which is uh, sentence structures. Uh, I know that a lot of CAT and GMAT uh, aspirants are given this advice that you should read a lot, which you should. Uh, however, uh, your reading needs to be smooth and your reading uh, is not just the volume or the quantity, but but how exactly are you uh, going about your reading? Okay, so it's your content, the kind of content that you're reading. Are you pushing your brain enough to be able to, uh, you know, explore complicated ideas? It's also important to be able to understand complicated sentences because beyond a certain point, uh, complex ideas uh, are expressed in the form of complex sentences, right? So you will have to understand how to break sentences uh, when you're reading. Uh, now, a lot of uh, bad reading happens because of the way we are taught in schools. So okay, it's not generally uh, your fault per se. I mean, uh, people from elite backgrounds or privileged backgrounds, just lucky and you tend to uh, have parents who speak really clean English or your uh, schools are really good or your friends, uh, your immediate circle speaks good English. So what happens is such students tend to uh, learn how to form complex ideas uh, in English per se and so it doesn't bother them much but people who are not as lucky and not from privileged backgrounds only or do not come from English medium uh, backgrounds uh, per se what happens is even though your, your brain is capable of processing complicated ideas because that's a different uh, function right you, in your mother tongue you obviously speak uh, complicated ideas but your brain cannot comprehend uh, English per se because you're not used to reading uh, you know sentences which are complicated or or practicing them uh, or practicing you you know, speaking them out. It's actually pretty easy and you can learn it uh, very quickly if you focus a little bit on grammar per se. Uh, so in grammar, we have sentence structures, okay, which is all about how sentences are formed. Now, one of the bad things that we are taught in school, the wrong things that we are taught in school is sentence is a unit of communication, which is actually not true. Uh, and what happens because of that is a lot of Indians tend to read full stop to full stop, right? Which is a bad way of reading because when the sentence is long, you're at the mercy of the length of the sentence. And when the sentence is long, what happens is uh, you tend to wait for the full stop and you keep reading even though you've already forgotten the first half of the sentence. And when the sentence goes beyond 10 to 12 words, your brain's already losing the information, which is something that should not be happening to you. It also tires you out very quickly because you're constantly forcing your brain to remember 20, 25, 30 words in one go, which is not what good readers do. Good readers, uh, you know, uh, space, space, space it out or phase it out better. So what, what we generally tend to do is not really read full stop to full stop. The full stop is actually the most useless uh, punctuation mark in English per se. Uh, but what we, tend, what we tend to do is we don't worry about the length of the sentence or the sentence itself. The sentence does not matter, okay? What good readers tend to do is we look for ideas, okay? And the basic unit, with idea is the basic unit of communication, uh, right? And human beings are human beings because we can communicate ideas and we are into storytelling, which is what anthropology teaches us, which comes down to how we express ideas. And every idea has two parts, right? Every idea has to give me two pieces of information uh, for it to be a complete idea. It should tell me who, what, or which answer to one of these three questions which is a noun or, or a pronoun basically the subject of the sentence so who am i talking about what about it okay so which is what we refer to as the verb so the idea has to give me two pieces of information i'm going to talk about the hero of the story and what is happening to the story per se right which we know as subject and verb in uh, language, in grammar, we call that a clause, which is what we tend to, you know, uh, not learn well in school. We learn this the sentence instead and, and students remember subject and predicate in sentences, right? But what you should actually uh, focus on is the clause. The clause, so, so one clause is also basically one simple sentence, right? So one clause is one complete idea. A clause has two parts. It has a subject and it has a verb combination. So any subject verb combination is called a clause. Really good readers focus on one clause at a time. Your sentence can have infinite number of clauses. There's no limit to it. And what is sentence structure? Sentence structure is basically how the clauses are connected inside a particular sentence. It's think in, in maths, right? Think of it as a maths expression. Let's say I can just say x square minus 2x plus 3 and I can just put this and then I can add another x square minus 1 or something like that, right? This is the equivalent of a complicated sentence. Exactly the same. You treat verbal exactly like maths, it'll generally reward you. Now, really good readers or people who are good with maths, they don't read all of this as a bunch of, you know, one string of uh, parameters, right? You solve, you, you maybe factorize it or you just look at it differently you look at this separately, you look at this separately, and you look at this separately, isn't it? Which is exactly what's happening even in a sentence. There are a bunch of ideas put together. You do not worry about the entire idea, entire sentence in one go. What you're trying to do is break the various aspects of that sentence. 
So sentence is a combination of multiple clauses and phrases. Now, what is the difference between a phrase and a clause? A clause is a subject verb combination. A phrase doesn't have a subject verb combination. It's an incomplete idea. It has some intelligible information, but it doesn't give you the complete idea. For example, if I say a good movie, it's a phrase because it doesn't give you a subject verb combination. It gives you partial information. But if I say I watched a good movie, then it has a subject I and it has a verb watch. So it becomes a complete idea. So your sentence at the very minimum must have one clause, which is what we call a simple sentence. Okay. So a simple sentence is nothing but one clause, right? It has one subject and one verb combination. For example, this here is a simple sentence. Dr. Strange is a subject and the verb is is. Mind you, again, verb itself is not, is misunderstood. When, when I say verb, people think action. Verb need not always be action. Verb can also be what's happening to the subject. What the subject is doing or what is happening to the subject. For example, if I say, uh, I'm hungry, right? It's There's no action here. Am is the verb here. Here, what's happening to the subject is, is being spoken about. The state of the subject, as we would call. Right. So don't always go looking for action words. You can also have is, was, are, were, which are verbs, isn't it? So subject and verb combination is a clause. So this sentence is a simple sentence. It has only one clause. Doctor Strange is one subject, one verb. So one simple sentence will have only one clause, one subject, one verb. Okay. It's the simplest of all ideas. So Doctor Strange is one of the most intelligent heroes in the universe. Now, one of the most intelligent heroes is what we call a phrase okay it it gives you some information but doesn't have a subject verb combination now if you look at this sentence it's slightly more complicated than the first sentence okay here dr strange has also been getting his due recognition as the actual clause this is the subject and has been getting is the verb part right so this part is the idea Marvel Sorcerer Supreme is a phrase. It's a group of words. It gives you some information, doesn't have subject verb combination. One of the more obscure but powerful magical characters. This is also a phrase. So this, this particular sentence is basically one phrase plus one clause and then another phrase, isn't it? So really good readers are focusing on this part because this has a subject verb combination. This is the decoration, okay? For example, I can put brackets here and add a two here, right? Doesn't matter. You have to first focus on this idea, right? So the clause is the main idea, the heart subject verb combination. Now a sentence can have multiple clauses. We'll get to that later. But see, if you notice, this is also a simple sentence because it has only one clause. But this looks more complicated than this because this particular sentence, apart from the clause, also has a couple of extra phrases as decoration, right? Added information. Now, If you look at this one, strange undergoes a compelling soul searching quest. This is also a clause. But here what happens is there is a second clause that started, that is the subject, started as a verb. Now in gram grammatical terms, we call this a relative clause. What's a relative clause? An extra subject verb combination where the subject is who, that or which, just these three words. Okay. But it's not two clauses. It's a clause inside another clause, right? This is my brother. Okay. This is my brother who I was talking about, for example, right? So that who I was talking about, I was talking about him. So whom I was talking about that part is extra information about brother. So it's not a separate idea. It's an, it's an inception of ideas, it's an idea inside an idea, right? So this sentence doesn't have two separate clauses. It's, it has one clause, main clause, the strange undergoes a compelling soul searching quest, one subject verb combination. The author then realized, okay, I have to give some information about quest. So the author added an extra uh, clause, which is called a relative clause. And then there is this phrase being a talented, but arrogant, egotistical surgeon. This is extra information about strange. So now if you're a good reader, you're just focusing on this subject verb combination. Strange undergoes a compelling soul searching quest. That's the idea. What kind of quest separate being a talented, but arrogant, egotistical surgeon is extra information about strange. Isn't it? So this is a phrase. So a clause is basically a subject verb combination. You're always searching for subject verb combinations irrespective of how long the sentence is, right? Now compare this with this particular sentence. It's not Dumbledore's sense of style or humor, his batty approach to teaching or his intelligence that make him my favorite character. Okay, now watch this. It's not, now sense of style or humor is what I call a phrase. It's a group of words. It makes some sense, partial sense, but doesn't have a complete idea. It's a phrase. Think of it as A. It's not Dumbledore's A, his batty approach to teaching, sorry, his batty approach to teaching, which is B, Second phrase or his intelligence. Third phrase, any group of words that is not a subject verb combination, but makes partial sense as a phrase. So it's not Dumbledore's A, B or C that make him 
my favorite character. It is not A, it is not B, it is not C. Again, that make him is a relative clause. But what's the main idea? It's not A, B or C. That's the main idea. It's not A, B or C that make him my favorite character. That make him my favorite character is an add-on to a, B, and C, right? So the main idea is it's not Dumbledore's sense of style or humor, his battery approach teaching or his intelligence. So good readers look at it as it's not Dumbledore's A, B, and C in their head. They don't even know they're doing it, but they're doing it. And, and if you're not a good reader, you tend to see so many words here and get confused, right? So sense of style or humor is not the idea. His battery approach is not the idea. His intelligence is not the idea. All of these belong to Dumbledore. It's not Dumbledore's sense of style or humor. It's not Dumbledore's battery approach to teaching. It's not Dumbledore's intelligence. Okay, so it's not Dumbledore's A, B, and C. So one subject, it is, is the verb in this case. It is not A, B, or C. That's the idea. Okay, that's the thing that you'll have to understand. Now, if I go to slightly, uh, if I go to another uh, complicated uh, sentence, okay, uh, let me just erase this quickly. Okay, so you, there are a few more uh, sentences here. Now we're going from simple sentence to what we call a, a complicated sentences, right? So, up, so if 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 a simple sentence is one one uh, subject and verb combination, you obviously have combinations where there are more than one one clause, right? More than one clause. So we also have what is called a compound sentence. We have what is called a complex sentence. It's it it comes down to what exactly am I? Uh, how exactly am I connecting the two clauses? That's what you'll have to understand. Okay. For example. In this case, uh, the Merc with the Mouth exploded into the mainstream with Ryan Reynolds' uh, dep uh, dep Ryan Reynolds depiction in the movies. But he's been a fan favorite in comic book circles before then. Okay, so now uh, what you need to notice here is uh, the Merc with the Mouth is a phrase, isn't it? It's not giving you a complete idea. This part is not giving you a complete idea. The Merc with the Mouth exploded subject verb combination the merc with the mouth exploded into the mainstream this is the idea the merc with the mouth exploded into the mainstream this is your phrase with ryan reynolds depiction in the movies is extra information okay so people who watched uh you know deadpool know who merc with the mouth is but don't get confused don't worry about the meaning don't worry about the background knowledge i deliberately chose a slightly complicated off sentence so that you can see the structure per se right now this but is what we call a conjunction so a conjunction connects two clauses. He has been a fan favorite. This is clause number two. The Merc with, with the mouth exploded into the mainstream, clause number one. When two clauses are connected, you will see a conjunction. Okay. So this sentence is what we call a compound sentence. So what is a compound sentence? A compound sentence is basically two simple sentences connected using a conjunction. Okay. And what are those conjunctions? And, or, but, yet. Okay. Words like these. So what happens is, it's think of it this way. It's written this for in this format X comma and Y or X comma, but Y X comma or Y. So really good readers look at this comma and, or this comma, but for example, as a full stop for me, this is the idea. And this is the idea. So in a comp the compound sentence is long, but it should not really harass you because you can just break the compound sentence into multiple parts separately and individually process them. Compound sentence is basically generally bad writing because authors just, you know, instead of putting a full stop and breaking them into smaller sentences, just keep writing. So you, it need not trouble you that much, even though it's slightly longer because a compound sentence is a bunch of simple sentences which can exist on their own. The Merc with the Mouth exploded into the mainstream with Ryan, Ryan Reynolds depiction in the movies full stop. Okay, that is one idea. Ryan, uh, Merc with the Mouth or Deadpool or whoever it is has been a fan fa favorite in comic book circles before then. Separate idea. So any sentence where you see X comma and Y, X comma but Y, X comma or Y, X comma yet Y, Okay, X comma for Y. If you see this format of, of sentences, X is a separate sentence, Y is a separate sentence. Don't trouble yourself by reading the whole thing in one go. Process X separately, process Y separately. Okay, these are called compound sentences. Nothing but, so the definition, the technical definition of a compound sentence is two main clauses or both the clauses can exist on their own independently. Okay, this sentence though is the dangerous one. This is the third type of sentence. This is called a complex sentence. Okay, and complex sentences are really dangerous because the definition of complex sentences, it has multiple clauses, but one clause is dependent on the other clause. If here, one clause is not dependent on the other clause, so you can neatly break it here, right? This is a separate sentence, this is a separate sentence. But in this sentence, you can't neatly break it, 
okay though she tries to hide it so she tries to hide it as one clause but though she tries to hide it cannot exist on its own it depends on the other side hermione has a caring motherly sort of soul okay this is the idea or if i give you something really simple okay if it rains if it rains i sleep okay now i sleep main clause independent idea can exist on its own if it rains is a subordinate clause doesn't exist on its own it is dependent on this part that's why we call it a complex sentence it's a complex sentence because one clause is not independent of the other clause it's dependent on the clause these are the kind of sentences that you have to be worried about and question setters absolutely love these kind of sentences because critical reasoning comes into play uh, complications come into play because you have to understand which side depends on which side isn't it and there are all kind of all kinds of conditionalities that get involved here now how do you identify a complex sentences one part is dependent on the other part you'll have words like if though although even though okay while unless until conditional words right words that tell you that the first part is dependent on the second part so the second part this part is the main clause it can exist on its own this part is called a subordinate clause because though she tries to hide it cannot exist on its own though she tries to hide it is incomplete hermione has a caring motherly sort of soul exists on its own isn't it now comma and so this is what you notice is what you notice here is it's this is on the outside it's a compound sentence it one of the parts of the compound sentence is a complex sentence so th this sentence basically is of the form do okay x and y this whole part comma and b think of this like a maths equation so you have a complex so your compound sentence is nothing but a comma and b structure this is your compound sentence structure a comma and b a comma or b where a is separate b is separate in this case the a itself is again of a complex sentence which is of the form do x comma y so generally i say if x comma y remember it as this if x comma y is the complex sentence structure instead of if it can be any of the conditional words they're called subordinate conjunctions if you want to google them up if though although even though unless until while all these words okay so the sentence becomes complicated because not only is it a complex sentence it's a complex sentence as part of a bigger sentence so though she tries it tries to hide it hermione has a caring motherly sort of soul one idea hermione is always ready with a comforting word second idea two separate ideas that can exist on their own so that's why the outside structure is a compound sentence but one part of the compound sentence is again a complex sentence so how, you now you see why sentence structures are so confusing right because when you're reading complicated ideas they cannot be expressed in the form of just one clause or two clauses okay there will be a lot of clauses which are connected to uh, each other and so you will have to learn how to break them peacefully separately and don't panic the more you read the more your brain understands how to process uh, these ideas okay so this is how a complex sentence looks like now you look at this example the hulk is a classic flagship hero from marvel comics comma and so for a good reader this is just the full stop you don't need to care about this entire connection right so the hulk is a classic flagship hero from marvel comics idea number 1 comma and so that idea you have to process first don't worry about going forward process this idea comma and next idea if reports are true it appears he's finally getting another solo project in the mcu it appears he's getting another solo project is your so the second part is of the form if x comma y this is a complex sentence if reports are true it appears he's getting so this is your main clause this is your subordinate clause so on the outside it is of the structure a comma and b so you know that you have to process a separately the hulk is a classic flagship hero from marvel comics one idea process separately you have to process b separately b itself is a complex sentence which is if x comma y so when you see sentences like this you have to learn to break the sentences if you do not learn to break the sentences doesn't matter how much you read you will always have trouble with complicated ideas and how do you break sentences when you when you see a sentence let's say you're reading from aeon right in aeon you have all these complicated ideas and you see a really long sentence break the sentence open a word document copy paste the sentence okay and then break it like this okay uh, one idea at a time how many ideas are there break the sentence into all its clauses and phrases separately and see how the clauses are interact with each other and most of you are also doing maths right you also learn algebra so what are you doing in algebra is exactly what you're supposed to be doing with these sentences okay but good readers really tend to do this in their head they don't have to really do all of this breaking it already happens in their head the moment i see though i know in advance that the sentence will be though x comma y so i'm looking at x separately y separately by the time i come to y i already know that there'll be a contrast between x and y because of the meaning of the word though so for really good readers that anticipation works really well that's why we read 
faster because I know how the sentence is going to be. If I see an if in the beginning of the sentence, I know how that sentence is going to be. I know that there's going to be a condition first and then I go, um, there's going to be a, uh, you know, an action. If it rains, I sleep. So I know when it rains, something is going to happen. What is it? Something. So I process this information separately as a condition and this information separately as the action that happens. And I connect these two because of that. If those are called complex sentences. So three types of sentences, just to uh, give you a quick recap, simple sentence, compound sentences, complex sentences. Okay. Simple sentence will have one clause. One clause means one subject, one verb. That's it. Compound sentence is of the form A comma and B. And if you want to remember the conjunctions which are present in compound sentences, uh, we use the term fanboys for it, for and nor, but or yet and so. Okay, or you can Google them up. It, they're called coordinate conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions uh, are the is the word you're looking for. In compound sentences, they connect to equal status clauses. So for reading, you don't have to, you can just, blanked out that, that that conjunction see these as two different sentences so it doesn't matter how long the sentence is if you see a comma and comma or comma but any of those seven uh, conjunctions you can just see them as two separate sentences it makes your life easier because you're breaking the sentence straight away the more you can break them cleanly the faster you will read okay so that's compound sentence the dangerous ones are the complex sentences complex sentences will have subordinating conjunctions subordinate conjunctions are conjunctions like if though although even though and while unless until there is a condition involved if x comma y is the structure where x is the condition and y is the action y is the main clause x is the subordinate clause so y can exist as an independent sentence x can't exist as an independent sentence and then the fourth type which you've seen here is what we call complex compound sentences or we can call them compound complex sentences where inside the compound sentence one part is a complex sentence so a comma and b is the compound sentence Sentence on the outside between two full stops but the b itself is again an effects comma y so it's a complex sentence inside it's an inception of uh, you know complicated sentences so you'll have to learn how to break them out break them down so it's a complex sentence inside a compound sentence okay it was sometimes inside a complex sentence one part will be a compound sentence for example if it rains i, sl I sleep and i dream so i sleep and i dream is a compound sentence which is the Y part of FX comma Y. So inside a complex sentence, one part is a compound sentence. Okay. So you'll have to learn to see the outside structure first. The outside structure is what comes between the two full stops. The conjunction will tell you what is the overall structure of that sentence. You have to learn to break those sentences down. Okay. So I hope uh, this video makes sense. I know I got a little technical, but I, I, think people should learn this stuff, should understand this kind of stuff because otherwise you'll never be a good reader. Some people can do it subconsciously without knowing the grammar behind it because that's because they come from privileged backgrounds and good school, good schools and, you know, really good English teachers uh, or, or pay, good parents, like sometimes parents, not good parents, but English speaking parents. Uh, and some people are unlucky and they did not have access to good teachers or parents who can speak English. And then you do not understand English, even though you do Everybody does this in their mother tongue, by the way. So it's not so much an IQ thing. Uh, we all folk, we all uh, break these complicated ideas in the language of our comfort. But because the world uh, is pretty shallow and it judges you on the basis of English, which is again not such a great language per se, you will have to learn this so that you know uh, you can do well at B schools or and later as well. So learn learn sentence structures. Not that difficult. Google the terms that I've just mentioned in the in the video. I'll probably talk a lot about it. And if this video has helped you, I mean, uh, you can let me know, and I'll probably make a few more in this particular series. Until next time, peace out.